The year was 1971. Starbucks introduced a new style of fresh roasted coffee to the restaurants and retail stores of Seattle. Eight hours a day, six days a week, roasters took orders. Deliveries were made to local businesses. To ensure freshness, coffee had to be used within seven days of the roast date. Any unused coffee would be picked up by drivers and donated to local charities. It wasn't until the advent of flavor lock packaging technology that we were able to maintain our freshness standards of quality and share our unique style of roasted coffee beyond the Northwest. It was that uncompromising commitment to our quality, to our customers, and to giving back to our communities that shaped us into the Starbucks of today. Let's take a look at how the roasting process begins. Once green coffee has been evaluated and approved by coffee buyers from the Starbucks Coffee Trading Company located in Luzon, Switzerland, it's ready for shipment from the coffee region. Beans are shipped to the green coffee warehouses located next to each of the five roasting plants we have around the world today. Amsterdam, York, Pennsylvania, Sandy Run, South Carolina, Carson Valley, Nevada, and the final and most complex roasting plant located in Kent, Washington. Upon arrival at one of the roasting plants, the green coffee is again inspected for quality, consistency, and to ensure that there's been no damage in shipping. D-Vanners unload the container and stack the bags of green coffee on pallets. Each pallet holds 20 bags of coffee that weigh between 100 and 155 pounds, or 68 to 91 kilos. A random sample of coffee is taken from each pallet to be hand roasted and cupped. This is known as the arrival sample. Through this process, the green coffee team ensures once again that the coffee meets Starbucks standards before releasing it for final approval. Once approved, coffee is stored in the green coffee storage area until it's ready to enter the roasting system. As the coffee enters the roasting system, it passes through a machine called a cimbria. The cimbria will sort out any foreign objects like sticks, small rocks, or pieces of burlap. After the cimbria, coffee is weighed and sent to one of 18 coffee silos. The team in the control room is responsible for the transportation and monitoring of coffee as it moves throughout the roasting plant. Advanced technology allows the team to monitor green coffee inventory and expiration times in each silo. The control team can be assured that only green coffee is loaded into the silos and that it's ready to be roasted. Coffee roasters roast green coffee to achieve the perfect flavor profile and ultimately the desired Starbucks roast. Depending on the specific coffee, roast times typically fall between 12 and 15 minutes. Scientifically calibrated, the Agtron is a tool used to measure the color of the coffee after it's roasted. Since each roast has a specific color range, this step in the process ensures that the coffee was roasted properly. This advanced technology allows Starbucks to replicate the original art of hand roasting established in 1971. After the coffee is roasted, it's sent off to the brown roasted coffee silos where it's kept fresh through the introduction of nitrogen, creating an oxygen-free environment. For those coffees that are blended after the roast, the blending bins or mixers are used to blend these coffees. Once the coffee is ready to be packaged, it's moved from the roasted silos to one of the packaging lines. An important part of packaging is flavor lock. Flavor lock is a small one-way valve in every bag of coffee that allows gases out without letting oxygen in. Flavor lock packaging has allowed Starbucks to package and ship coffee while coffee is degassing, enabling us to grow to where we are today. As the coffee moves into packaging, Quality Assurance will check it again. Every 30 minutes, one random bag of coffee is selected from every packaging line and a quality assurance test is performed on the bag. Oxygen analysis and weight verifications are completed to ensure the packaged coffee is meeting standards. 
In addition to checking the weight and integrity of the bag, the bell jar test checks for leaks or holes in packaging that would allow oxygen to get in. The bag of coffee is put under high pressure in a tank of water. Should any small air bubbles appear, then the packaging has been compromised. This is the final quality assurance test before shipment. It's Starbucks commitment to quality and freshness, to customer satisfaction, and to the communities in which we do business that keep Starbucks connected to its roots. The goals and standards set forth back in 1971 are the same as those we follow today.